to the GP and Happy Show. I have a great show tonight. I have Jolene and we're doing Wine Tasting 101. Stay tuned. Welcome to the GP and Happy Show that happens every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. I'm your host, Kathy, and I have been G-Free and Happy for four years and counting. Tonight is like a dream come true for me. <laughs> Wine makes me happy. And I have a special guest, Jolene Green, from Match Coffee and Wine in our town of Duval, Washington. And she's my special guest. Uh, so we're going to be doing a wine tasting because wine is gluten-free, people. Gluten-free. And that's why I love it so much. Um, hello, Yesenia. Um, I'm very happy to have everybody here tonight because, like I said, this is going to be a fun show. Uh, Jolene, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, my name's Jolene, and I opened Match Coffee and Wine almost three years ago. In 20, or 2005, I moved here from Idaho, and because Washington was such a wine state, I got really interested in it, and I started taking um, wine classes at South Seattle Community College in West Seattle. And as I was doing my corporate job, I was taking the wine classes at night and in my free time. And I started out, um, I ended up wanting to date, so I ended up going on to Match.com and met my husband there, um, actually on the first week. And so on one of our wine tasting dates, I said, ooh, we should open up a wine bar. And then I was like, oh, now I've got the name, we should call it Match. And so that's where it came from. And I started doing my business plan for the business in one of my wine classes. So that's how Match came about. Very nice. And it's Match Coffee and Wine. Is it, it no, it's just Match Coffee, Coffee Wine. Coffee and Wine. And wine mm -hmm. So she's here from Duval. Uh, her her store is in Duval, it's a wine bar. She actually sells wine too, right? I do. I have a retail section and you can come in and purchase wine for and I'll help you match things up with food, things that you're eating at home. Okay, so we're going to do wine tasting tonight. And um, do you want to tell us a little bit about wine tasting and wine? Yes. Some of your expertise. So we'll talk just a tiny bit about the difference between tasting and um, drinking. So when we're drinking wine, it's more about hanging out with your girlfriends, hot date with your husband, like or that. reading a book where you're just drinking it and you're not thinking about it. But if you're actually tasting wine, you're taking the time to smell it and breathe it in and have a quiet space, pour like it in your it. glass and pay attention to what you're actually tasting. So that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to do that. So this is, like I said, a dream come true to do this live and to taste some wines that are gluten free. Um, let's talk about that myth real fast before we get started. Okay. Uh, people have told me that uh, there's flour in wine barrels. Have you ever heard that? I have not ever heard that. Thank you. <laughs> I think what happens is, I think people might associate it to there is a natural yeast in wine and in wine making. And so I think because people might associate yeast with flour, with bread, that, that maybe that's where that comes from. But mm. there is not. Good to know. And um, actually, you guys can all chat with us. Um, if you go to live, well, you're on live.gfreeandhappy.com as you're watching this live. You can introduce yourself on chat and ask us questions as we go. So let's start with the first wine. Okay, the first thing we're going to try, and we're going to, these are kind of in the order of the way you would actually drink wine, preferably, is whites into reds and then whites into heavier reds. So we're going to start out with um, a brie or a goat cheese, excuse me. And we're gonna pair it with a wine, a Sauvignon Blanc from Novelty Hill. Ooh, my favorite. Yay, so let's pour a little bit in each glass. Okay. And we'll get some cheese on a cracker. And, and how much do you, I mean, like that much for tasting? Or? For tonight, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, not quite so much. No, most of the time, well, hello. tastes are just maybe, maybe better, about an ounce. Yeah, we better slow down <laughs> So we might be dumping a little yeah. bit tonight. Okay. But one of the reasons the Sauvignon Blanc goes so well with goat cheese is because the acidity, in, the acidity in the wine matches with the tangy acidity in the goat cheese. Now, I'm a huge fan of Novelty Hill, too. 
So this is one of their, this is their 2011. And they are one of the top 20, this, the, the grapes come from a vineyard that, that is called Stillwater and it is one of the top 20 vineyards in the state of Washington. I just love the name too, it's very nice. Okay, so, so, so eat, drink, eat, drink, be happy. <laughs> Oh, there's cheese all over me. And do you taste? Well, typically when you're really tasting wine, you start out by really just putting your nose in and you're smelling the wine. You're getting that first initial light aromas of, of each wine. What kind of things do you smell in this one? Sweetness. And any kind of um, tropical fruits? Yes. If I would have had a note, I think I would, I mean, uh, I guess pineapple, mm -hmm. is it? Or melons. Melons, mm -hmm. yeah. Are melons usually part of a white? Most often, a lot of, a lot of um, whites have citrus and melons, peach, pear, those type of profiles are very similar in all the whites. And um, this is more dry than some of the wines, right? It's a little dry, but not near as dry as like what we're going to be trying next. Oh, okay. The champagne will be drier, and so will the Pinot Gris. This is more of a fruitier wine. Okay. I like it. So do I. And you had notes on the tasting in your tongue, too. Mm. Yeah, so typically when you're tasting wines, there's a couple different sections of your wine. I mean, of your tongue, that, that's, I haven't even drank too many glasses and I'm already <laughs> messing up. That, um, that's where you taste things. On the very tip of your tongue is where you'll actually taste the sweetness of a wine. And on the very uh, front sides of your tongue is where you'll taste salty. And then toward the back is where you'll taste sour. And in the very back of your tongue is where you'll taste bitter. Okay. Nice to know. And um, so goat cheese goes well with? With Sauvignon Blancs. That's a very typical wine pairing. Mm. Okay. Tasty. Mm -hmm. And still water, by the way. Yeah. No, so actually Novelty, Novelty Hill. Hill. Novelty, Hill is, yeah, Novelty Hill is joined with Janowick Winery and they are over in Woodenville. Okay, so mm -hmm. I do have to. Yep. Let's dump. Oh, poor thing. Yeah. So. By the way, cheers. Okay, so um, the next one you have is? Is a soft brie. And we're going to pair oh, it love brie. with champagne. Oh, it's yes, I'll Go open this. Open. Well. Oh, it's a twisty. It is a, this is a twist. And we do, what, what happens is we carry these at match. Um, I found the little 187s are perfect for women. They just love it. It's one Canada of our most had, popular things. Yeah, when we went to Canada and I wanted something fun, uh -huh. if, and I bought those. Yeah, they're all over. Well, it's nice because it keeps all the effervescent bubbles just more fresh, and it's just the perfect size when you're coming into a place. Oops. Don't worry about it. And look at the little champagne glasses. Yeah. Ooh, that's pretty. So this is a really dry champagne out of California. And now, do you switch this if? For not really. Okay. You can if people want okay. to, but not really. It's more about the bubbles and smelling it. It's very dry. What kind? Of, what's in this one? Oh, don't ask me oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it from again? Typically, mo some champagnes are. Um, this one's out of California. Okay. Oh, it says California. Yeah. California Champagne Extra Dry. Very nice. So Breeze cheeses, you should actually, it's not very handy to do this, but you should leave the rind on them, but let them soften before you are um, serving them to your guests. So typically, usually, you know, at least a half an hour or so before you're ready to, to serve it to people. My favorite. So we do Breeze, which are, there's, there's certain things called bridge ingredients, which you can actually stretch cheeses to um, taste a little different with other, with other wines. If you're going to just eat brie by itself, champagne is the best thing to have. But if you're going to add some things to it, like even at match, we'll add toppings like a caramel with pecans. We'll add um, yeah. 
cherry to topping with uh, a fig balsamic over it. And when you're adding those kind of ingredients, then you can actually even drink other wines with it, more bigger wines, because mm -hmm. you kind of have a bridge ingredient that helps take it from this soft, plain, creamy cheese onto something else. So, so this would be a great holi holiday treat, too. This is perfect holiday treat. Okay, so let's taste. Okay. Cheers again. Cheers. Yummy. Mm, I know, fruity, huh? Very good. Especially with the brie. Mm -hmm. um, can I tell you again, this is like a dream come true to taste these <laughs> on my show? Well, it's how I feel even having a wine bar is I get to do this for a job. I get mm. to taste wine. I get to have winemakers come in. I've met winemakers from all over. I had a winemaker in that was from Portugal come into our bar. I had a really cool Italian guy come into our bar that made wine. Boy, so. I missed this. Though I'm going to go to, you have an event on Thursday. Yes. So on Thursday, we actually are very fortunate to have some local winemakers right here in our area. So on Thursday, Larry and his wife will be in at Match from 6 to 8.30, and they'll be bringing in their wines, and they're from Carnation. Nice. Five minutes away. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's try the next one. I'll try okay. a little more of this first. So the next wine is this is a Gouda and the Gouda is considered a semi-soft cheese. Oops. It's hard to do it over the bottle. By the way, these are the all gluten-free crackers. Yes. And what wine? So this, wine? this is we're pairing this with a Pinot Gris and this is an Italian wine. And this is one, this is a customer favorite. Um, one of my wine distributors is from Italy, and he's the one that turned me on to this wine. And um, it is excellent with Gouda. Okay, so I have the Gouda first? Yes. So the, the grape in a Pinot Gris, at least in this one, is Riesling. Is it really? Mm hmm I know. It's I didn't know that. Mm. So in here you're getting typical flavors of like apple Heaven. and pear, citrus, and you'll taste more like peach and lemon. That is smooth and yummy. I'm a white wine drinker, but I'm, I'm looking forward to well, trying Well, I'm going to make you ones. drink reds. <laughs> I love the Gouda with it because too. Because I am a red wine drinker. Mm. That is really good Oops, with okay. the Gouda, too. All right. I hate doing that. You know, okay. it's hard. <clears throat> but there is a reason why even when you are, like, if you're really going to be tasting a lot of wines, you actually do just, you put them in your mouth, you swirl them around, kind of coat your tongue, coat your palate, and then most people, when they're actually tasting wines, do not swallow it. They spit it they out. They spit it out. Or, yeah, they dump it, yeah, which is sad. Sad. But if it's really, really good, expensive wine, you usually just drink <laughs> it anyway. <laughs> okay, let's try this next one. Okay. The next one is, this is from Adelsheim. It is a winery in Newburgh, Oregon. And so it That's is a Pinot Noir. Wine. Mm -hmm. I actually went to this winery when my husband and I were out wine tasting. Really? Mm -hmm. And we are going to taste it with a Manchego. So this is a Spanish wine. And one of the things with Spanish wines, this is, Manchego is kind of one of those wines that they say is the perfect wine for cheese. Because I love this wine. almost any cheese can go with Manchego. It is... Any wine can go with it? Yes. Um, any of the white wines will still be good with it. Uh, most red wines will be good with it. But Pinots are especially nice. Um, they just are super smooth with this. And most um, wineries that I've been going to to taste wines, they have the cheese plates now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which I think helps with the palate, right? It does. It does. It, plus, it gives you something fun to do while you're drinking. You know, in um, some of the holiday parties that I've done, we've done some wine tasting during the, you know, boring times or the lull times, and it's always fun. So have, this we, is have you ever done a blind taste testing? No. 
So we went to one that was held at Northwest Cellars, which was really fun. The winemaker there took all of his years of one particular varietal, and then we had to blind taste every one of them to see which year it was, oh my. which was totally difficult. Out of about seven wines, I got only one right. <laughs> That's like that uh, movie. What's the movie? Um, the one uh, Napa Valley movie uh, that I love. Oh. Um, there's a bottle shop. Yeah, that or, one. Oh, yes. Or um, what was the other one that was about Pinots? <laughs> um, this one smells amazing. I wish you guys could smell this one. Or looking at it. One of the ways you can tell, look at a wine is. When you're, when you're looking at wine, you typically try to put it over um, a white piece of paper. It allows you to look at the color of it. And so you start by looking at the outside with the rim. And you can, like with this one, you can see that it's a fairly clear rim. If this was dark brown, you'd be able to tell that this wine was older. Hmm. But this particular wine is a, um, I think it's a 2000, Ten. 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 So it's not too old. What's in this? Because this is amazing. This is a Pinot Gris grape. I do recommend uh, this Pinot. wine. How do you pronounce that? Adelsheim? 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 Uh-huh. And this the is out Willamette, of the Willamette Valley. Willamette. Wait. Say that again. Willamette Valley. I haven't been there yet. I have to go. All the wineries out there are really cool. Most of the winemakers are all working in their garages or in their back areas of their of their vineyards so you really get to go and talk to all the cool winemakers in person I'm gonna have to do a field trip there <laughs> so I what do you think of this that. pairing it's the best and I'm a huge fan of that cheese too yeah Manchego has sort of a nuttiness to it and a fruitiness to it so it holds it on it really holds its own flavor with almost any of these wines all right let's go to the next one perfect I know. Don't. This one's sad for me because I love Pinots. Okay. Oh, okay. So the next one is with a Parmesan. Yes, this one is Parmesan, and I actually brought it shredded because it is a really um, hard cheese, and so I thought it might be a little hard to cut while we were here. This is so. This is an aged hard cheese. And so the intensity and the weight of this is what really requires a bigger wine to go with it, which is why I actually brought Alexander Nicole. Whoa, it's heavy too. A heavy bottle, oh heavy my wine. Gosh. So Alexander Nicole is a. Wow, this is a beautiful label, isn't it? So they are one sideways. of my favorite. That's the other one sideways. Thank you, yeah. Yasmin. <laughs> <laughs> so they're one of my favorite wineries. Um, when I, on one of my first wine tasting trips in Washington, we went out to Prosser, and that's where I first discovered these guys. Their um, wine tasting room was is out there, and I love them so much. And then they, I saw their winery here in um, Woodenville, and so then we started carrying it. And it's from Horse Heaven Hills, uh -huh. which I love too. So this is a Cabernet, so it's a heavier, bigger, fruitier wine. And that's why it goes best with this cheese, because this is a bigger, harder cheese. And so it, it really needs a bigger wine. Okay, so I'm just gonna, it's easier just to do this for me. It is. <laughs> wow, I like this cheese. I'm glad you're back. Is it go, go, gluten free? Thanks for tuning in tonight. What? Oh, oh. we had a question? Oh, yes, if you have a question, um, please put it on the chat. I'm looking right at it. And Yesenia has one. What type of seafood items could you add to tasting tables for uh, holiday parties and get-togethers? That's a good question. Seafood items are, like, my favorite is shrimp. I love, 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 love shrimp. It could go with anything. Great appetizers. Uh -huh. But typically white wines are more for seafood. I do recommend this Novelty Hill. This is one of my favorites of all time. Okay, if you can find it. 
All right, so this one is a cab. So this one is a cab, and so it has, it's typically, so cabs are typically bigger fruit wines. They have um, kind of darker fruits. And this particular one actually has a flavor of coffee. Can mm. you taste that yes. or smell it? Mm -hmm. I used to be a huge fan of cabs at the beginning of the year. Really? <laughs> yeah, I was. Um, I am anxious to try some more of this one. This one was uh, so smooth. Pinots are nice, especially for people that are just starting to get into red wines. Um, typically, most people start with white wines when they're first starting to drink wine, and then they slowly move into reds. So Pinots and Merlots are some of the easiest red wines to start drinking. And then... I didn't know Merlot was, really? Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. And they're lighter. They're both lighter, and so that's usually where people start when they're drinking red wines. And then as they go further in, then they'll drink more of the Syrahs, which are peppery, oh, like and Cabs, which are bigger. And then usually, and this is always interesting to me, what will happen is once people make their way through all the whites and into all the reds, then they actually make their way back to whites again, and all of a sudden they start, pay they start paying more attention to the white wines and the flavors that are in them. And so all of a sudden, white wines then become much more interesting again to people. Right now, I'm really into the Chardonnays with the oaky taste. Oh, you and so many people. <laughs> I'm sorry, but, but I am. But you know what? The, it's really interesting, the oak flavor Winemakers have really gotten away from doing that. That was something that they did I know, it's before. hard to find. It's very hard to find. We, I struggle with that all the time, and that's something that people typically come in and they ask for, but it's really difficult. And They've the, really gotten away from doing that. And the stores all say non-oaky all mm -hmm, the time. It's like, mm -hmm. give me some oaky. I think it was kind of a almost a fad at one point where everything was super oaky and then all of a sudden now it's not. We're in that phase where it's just not done that I way I do anymore. see a lot of pears in the Chardonnay too, mm -hmm. which I, I mm -hmm. like the pears. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a typical fruit. Yeah, this sure. was actually very good. Good. Thank so you. So we're changing you yeah. into a red wine you drinker. Are. You are. I sucked it dry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, um, is this the last one already? This is. So the last one is? This one is actually a wine from Brian Carter. It's their Oplanto. Oh, and I picked Brian Carter because I just, a lot of ports come out of Portugal, but this one is a Woodenville one, which is why I brought this one. I'm so excited. One. I haven't tried a Brian yeah. Carter yet. And he has a lot of, and he's in the news a lot. Yes, he is. Um, he is one of the, oops, so, so actually oh, we're gonna oh, put these gonna in special glasses. Ooh, fun, okay. So one of the things really about um, wine tasting is, a, is the glass that you're drinking it in. So this is a port glass and it's small because what it does is it actually helps when you're putting, when you put the, you can just pour some in each one. And when you're putting your port in your oh port glass. Oh yeah, heavy it's, looking. Yeah, it is. And what's it's funny. It's like syrup almost. It is. And if you smell it, you'll smell a lot of the alcohol. And that's why it goes into this small glass because oh, it, it helps divine. It helps take away that big alcohol smell well, wait, by having it in a small let's glass. Let's have it with the blue cheese. I know cheese. we were all excited about I just know. drinking the wine. We weren't even doing the cheese. <laughs> Gotta have the blue cheese. Oops. And so you've picked, um, oh, I have some. Okay. Just, um, so this is a blue cheese. And you blue cheese. this is, with port. Uh huh. Why? So this is typically. Mostly because there's a saltiness in this blue cheese, and the saltiness then um, is a good complement to the sweetness of a port. Oh, so port is sweet? Yes. I didn't know that. Port is a very thick, sweet wine. Just like all the white wines that are syrupy then? <sighs> white wines are sweet in a different way. This is... Um, well, I'll be checking it out. Ooh, that blue cheese is excellent. Huge fan, huge fan of port. Oh this my god! This is gosh. a dessert wine. Is that awesome? Wow. The other thing that's really good with port, it's and I not didn't as sweet as the and white. I, I don't and like I did the not, white one. And I didn't bring it tonight. But one of the fun things to drink with port is chocolates. Really? That's kind of a really cool, oh, fun dessert thing. Chocolates. Oh my goodness! I assume everybody that loves wine has tried a port. I have not, and this is excellent. And actually, a lot of people have not tried ports or they don't think they're going to like them because they think they're they're just too thick or something but once you actually try them you kind of become a port lover so and it's fun to drink this from, oh, this is Woodenville Brian uh -huh. Carter again mm -hmm. 
So this one has typical, um, it has like raspberry and cherry, and it has more of a taste of chocolate in it. Oh my goodness, I mean, go out and buy a port wine today. <laughs> it's so I'm glad good. that you like it. Very. Oh, I could have more of this. So it kind of has more of a, of almost a brandy taste to it. Because you, if you kind of swirl it around in your mouth, you'll taste that it's it has a thickness to it. So it's this, not it's definitely much thicker than the other wines that we've tried. This is a good Christmas time wine too. Mm -hmm. I could see myself sitting there by a fire after um, you know wrapping all the presents and having some port mm -hmm. and blue cheese. I'd say my life is complete now. <laughs> I've, we've tried a Sauvignon Blanc right? Mm -hmm. yes. From Novelty Hill. Tried a champagne from California. We've tried a Pinot, is it Grigio or Pinot, do you say Gris? Well, Pinot Grigio is more what they'll say in Italy. Pinot Gris is more what they'll say in the United States. And it's, and it's from Italy. Mm -hmm. This particular one is from Italy. I do recommend that one too. Actually, I recommend all of these. This one of the reds was my favorite, the Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. Um, it was very good. And this one is from, say the valley again, Willamette? Willamette, you're Willamette. messing me up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can't say it after you say it. <laughs> um, <coughs> the next one is the um, Cabernet Sauvignon, uh -huh. and it's from say Alexander the Nicole. And why'd you pick this one? I picked this one just because it's one of my favorite. And when very I very good. first started, um, and joined a wine club, they were the first wine club that I joined. Really? Mm -hmm. Just when I first tasted their wine, I liked them so much. That's and nice to know. Yeah. And then, hello. Brian Carter. Yeah, hello. We, we have lots of Brian Carter it. wines at Match. It's, they are just one of our favorite. I we have love to them. say, Washington has a really nice collection of wineries here. There are over 800 wineries in the state of Washington now. You have a Big job to do. Then. Get all those. <laughs> I know, people darn it! When it's something to have to do to drink wine, that's as my job. Okay, so tell us you have a a, a, a wine tasting on Thursday. Mm -hmm. We need to get her live doing these things more often because we all love wine, don't we? Yes. And uh, so you have a wine tasting on Thursday mm -hmm. at Match, uh -huh. and you could go to MatchCoffeeWine.com, and we always have our events posted up there. We do a lot of. Um, a lot of different events. We have um, live music on Friday nights and Saturday nights, so we always have jazz or blues or indie musicians that come in. And you have great desserts. We have great are, desserts. Uh, you have gluten free. Uh -huh. We have we have quite a bit of gluten free because I have a lot of gluten free customers yes, like you yourself. Do. Yes. So we do gluten free for our sandwiches. We do gluten free for our flatbreads. The we the the pear gorgonzola. Gorgonzola. Oh gosh, is <laughs> that's like that's like eating food that's like dessert, and you can call it we, food, but it really tastes like dessert. Food porn, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> With wine, <laughs> super is favorite amazing. of everyone's. Um, and then um, we do a lot of things in the community. I've always I always believed that when I opened Match, I wanted to be a cornerstone business in this town, and so I try to get really involved in the community. And so we do a lot of um, fundraisers for women and children in this town. And so we've had, yes, a, you do. we've had a purse party. So all my customers donated all their used purses or just purses that they had in their closets that they didn't need anymore. And we brought those in and we did a silent auction. We raised $1,500 for, for, for Acres of Diamonds and for Livewire. Acres um, of Diamonds is for women. It's a, it's a women and children's shelter here in Duval. And then Livewire is a domestic violence shelter um, in You're very passionate Eastside. about those I am, yeah. charities. Um, uh, one more thing, um, we had port with dark chocolate peanut butter cups with sea salt. Hello. Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I should have brought chocolate. Mm -hmm. And those. Yes. I would like that, Yesenia, please. Yeah. Um, so these are the wines that go to Match Coffee. Uh, by the way, they won an amazing uh, award recently. You I want to tell us before yes. we leave? So one of the cool things is we were nominated for Best Wine Bar in Western Washington. King Five does a promotion every year that they take different businesses and put them in categories. And so we won, yay, yay. for Wine Bar. 
which is pretty cool. We won last year and we won this year. I just had to have her on my show. So I am over the moon for the show and for Jolene uh, to be here live. Thank you. And thank you for all for joining in tonight and your questions. And um, until next week, by the way, next week I'm doing a show again here and it's all about raw Thanksgiving fun. It's all sorts of appetizers or, or um, ideas for your raw Thanksgiving dinner. Ooh, or we'll have to appetizers. see what wines go with raw foods. Ooh, yeah, I, wonder. <laughs> I wonder. I'll have to pair it. Um, until next week, this is Kathy with gfreeandhappy.com and thank you again, Jolene. No, thanks have for having me. Yeah, have a great gfreeandhappy week, everybody.